I'm Tom Hackett, and today we're going to talk about von Neumann's five bottlenecks and C6, part two. In the first video, we looked at the von Neumann computer architecture. And while it has served us well, we encountered a couple bottlenecks along the way. We encountered a code bottleneck, where because the program code and data were stored in main memory, the CPU constantly had to access that memory and therefore created a bottleneck in transferring the data. That was solved by adding caches. And then we saw another bottleneck where the cores couldn't speed up any faster beyond the range of say two to four gigahertz. And we solved that problem by adding more cores into the CPU. But we have three other bottlenecks to go, so let's get started. So this architecture uh, has been doing well but in the past few years, the past five or six years, it has also started to reach its limitations. And the limitation is really driven by data. And so one thing we could do is add in more CPU cores. So we added more CPU cores that follow this same layout with uh, another CPU chip with cores, with cache coherent internet, with each with their own caches, and then tie it into the system. But if you look at this, because everything now has got its own cache, every core has its own cache and we're distributed across different processor chips, how do we manage this cache coherency problem? Well, just like inside of one chip it was optimum to use a cache coherent interconnect, it is also optimum to do that between chips. So here we can add in a new process, a new element and call it the cache coherent interconnect to connect the computer chips. So this gets us, gives us a way to add in more processing power by adding more computer chips. So we'll call that the CPU bottleneck. Now, what about all this data driven in the internet? What we see is that we have an exponential increase in the amount of data that's flowing through the internet. And while this has been true, it, driven initially, by the proliferation of mobile devices and each of us streaming our videos and so forth. Today, this uh, exponential increase is being driven by things like deep learning and artificial intelligence applications that are themselves driving a lot of data through the inter internet. And, but we're still limited in our processor speed. So the speed we can run at is staying about the same. All right. So, since all of this is taking place in servers in the cloud, we're going to call this the cloud bottleneck. So what do we do about the cloud bottleneck? Well, when people look at the, uh, the data that is being used here, it becomes clear that there are certain classes of data, certain classes of processing jobs that can be singled out and processed by special purpose hardware, can be processed by accelerators. So what we can do is, add in some extra hardware components to accelerate those data functions. Now, what might we be talking about? Well, a lot of things. One thing it could be is security-related tasks that require a lot of computation. Another thing could be artificial intelligence. So let's face it, we all love these personal assistants that listen to our voices, and then somehow they're able not just to understand our language, but understand our meaning. What are we trying to get at? and then give us that information. So th that's all artificial intelligence, and maybe that could be handled in an accelerator. Another thing might be certain network functions. Basically, this goes on and on. So in this approach, then, now we can manage all of this new data that's being generated. But how do we tie this into the system architecturally? Well, we could think of these as I.O. devices, and we could say, OK, these are kind of I.O. Let's just tie it into the I.O. channel and have that come in this way. Do you see a problem here? Well, just like the cores were competing for memory, now we have our accelerators competing for memory along with the CPUs. So that's clearly going to be another bottleneck. But we can solve that. We can say, let's not do that. Let's not connect through the I.O. system. Let's go ahead and extend this cache coherent interconnect and then tie everything in. And that way, 
these accelerators can have their own caches too. And in this way, we are extending this same principle that we use first in cores and then across the CPU cluster, now extending it to the accelerators too. So that's how we can get over this cloud bottleneck. But this brings us to the, the next and final bottleneck. And this one is different. It's not really a technology-related issue. It's a practical economic business-related issue. It's very hard now for any one company to supply all of this stuff, right? And while today's um, cache-coherent interconnects are often proprietary in nature, we need something that multiple companies could tie into. OK, so now we finally get to C6. Because C6 is a cache-coherent interconnect for accelerators. And this is a new standard that was jump-started last year by seven companies. They were uh, AMD and ARM, Huawei and IBM, Mellanox, Qualcomm, and Xilinx. So they got together to jumpstart this standard, but today it's an open standard that any company can join. So that gets us through that last bottleneck, that company bottleneck, where multiple companies can now work together to create a heterogeneous computing environment. Now, while all this sounds great, it's still kind of theoretical because there are millions of servers deployed in the cloud. So how are we going to take this to those millions of servers? Well, we need to use existing infrastructure. And just like today, PCI Express was used for most of our I.O. in the servers. We'd like to be able to use that same thing here. And in fact, C6 does. So it uses the PCI Express lower levels to connect everything together. So we use the same FIs, we use the same cabling, connectors, et cetera. And that becomes a rapid way to implement this important new standard. So keep an eye out for C6 until the next bottleneck comes along that we all have to solve. But until then, I'm Tom Hackett for Whiteboard Wednesday. <laughs>